Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer Brown coming to you live from Baca Wines Happy Hour. We have a wonderful happy hour for you here today. We're going to be drinking a fabulous wine, our 2018 home base Zinfandel from Baca. And we've got a fabulous guest. I'm going to be talking to Brianna Decker, the world champion in women's ice hockey. And I can't wait to talk to her about all things hockey, wine, and what's going on in her life. So with that, I will bring her on and see what's going on with Brianna. I hope you all have had a really happy holiday with your family and you're getting ready for a really great New Year's. I know I am. Hey, Brianna. Hi. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? Really good. First things first, can I pour you a glass of wine? Absolutely. Okay, all right, I've got our home-based Zinfandel here. I'm gonna pour it for you right there. Let's see if I can get it. Oh, okay, let's see. Oh, all right, let's see if you got it. Perfect, thank you. <gasps> nice. You're welcome, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> to a happy hour. Okay, I have so many questions for you today. I'm just gonna jump right in. I read that you started playing hockey at the age of four. Can you tell me what it is that attracted you first to hockey? How did you get into hockey? Yeah, so I started playing when I was four. Uh, I have two older brothers, one younger brother. Um, and fun fact, my parents never played hockey, so my brothers just happened really? to get into it. Yeah, so my brothers happened to get into it, and I was like, I want to do that. I want to be out there. Um, and I just fell in love with it as soon as I stepped on the ice. That's amazing. Do you think you're competitive by nature? Uh, yes, I get that. I, you know, a lot of people always say like, you <laughs> seem so competitive by nature, but honestly, I look at like my brothers, um, my two older brothers, they made me, I would say more competitive than anything. Like we would play outside, um, on the street, um, in our driveway up and, you know, with the lights on all the way till 9 PM when it is in the summer, 10 PM in the summer. And I, I wanted to, I would basically almost be fighting with them. Sometimes I would leave it with, you know, leave the rink or, the driveway in tears and other other nights I would beat them and maybe leave it in tears. So it's uh it was always a really competitive game. Oh wow. I bet they're really proud that they're the ones that got you into it. And I have a photo. Well unfortunately the way Instagram works, two of them or one of them is being cut off in this photo. You can only see two of them. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's my brothers, yeah. When <laughs> when was this taken? Uh that was last fall. So everyone looks well, you know since COVID, maybe they've all gained a few pounds, but everyone else, everyone pretty much looks the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have some other photos too, now that I'm sharing photos. Okay, I, I want to say that I absolutely love your headshot that you have. This must be a headshot. <laughs> yeah, it's that's beautiful. it's one of them. Yeah, we, we that was at the uh, prior to the Olympic Games um, in 2018. Yeah, definitely had my hair done. I didn't do that myself, so... <laughs> Well, either way, whether you did it yourself or someone else did it, you look so glamorous. Probably the most glamorous Thank you. ice hockey team player ever. Um, <laughs> okay, I have some other photos of you winning some some medals here as well. What's what's that from? Yeah, that one was from, I believe, actually I know this for a fact, it was from last spring, um, spring 2019. We won world championships, and that's one of my best friends on the team, Casey Bellamy. Um, and we've been playing on the team for the last 10 years together, and – We've wow. obviously played, we've played in a lot of world championships, a lot of Olympic games together. Um, and we never get a picture yeah. together with the trophy, with the trophy. And there's, we are like, we have to get one. Like we haven't had one yet. So, yeah. Oh, definitely. Well, I hope that's framed on your wall somewhere too. Cause I'm sure that's really meaningful to you. Yeah, absolutely. It for sure is. Oh, um, what, something else I wanted to ask you too is I know you're training right now. You train every day. That's part of your life as, as um, a competitor, both professionally and also in the Olympics. What does a typical day look like when you're training? Yeah. So, well, we will, I mean, we might get to this in a bit, but I have a puppy, so I have to get up really early. <laughs> um, yeah. And so I get up pretty early. I get up around six thirty, seven o'clock every morning. Um, and I typically train for a workout for a couple hours in the morning, hour and a half to two hours. 
Um, and then I could get on the ice for about um, an hour and a half, every, pretty much every day. Um, obviously, when it's an Olympic year, we're skating every day. Right now, it's been a little challenging with, you know, the ice and, you know, COVID. So things are a little different. I'm only skating probably three, four times a week right now, but definitely working out, um, you know, five days a week. And do you train by yourself or do you train with the rest of the team? Yeah, so right now I'm training by myself. Um, I'm back in Wisconsin at my parents' house, so I'm a little bit, little bit lonely as far as not having a training partner. But um, when I'm up in Calgary, um, where I'm normally at, um, actually my, one of my best, my best friend Casey, who was in the picture before, she's up there as well. Uh, we both had like decided to like move up there a few years ago to play up there, and it's been incredible. It's a little different, obviously, training with the enemy, but. Um, it's, it's awesome. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a lot of fun. So, um, no training on my own. A lot of us train on, by ourselves or in small groups. Um, I think it just adds a little bit more of a challenge to your lifestyle when you're training alone, just self accountability. It's, I think it's good for me. I'm sure. And I bet it's good to mix it up too. Doing it sometime by yourself and sometimes with the team. So how many yeah. medals do you have? I know that you won gold with the UF Team USA in 2018 in Seoul, and you won silver before that. But how many – you must have, like, a room, like a shrine at your parents' <laughs> house or something with, like, a ton <laughs> of medals. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I've been to seven world championships, and I've uh, been a part of six um, six championship teams. So six, yeah, six oh gold medals – from world championships and then one gold medal from the Olympics and then two, uh, one silver from world championships and one silver from, um, obviously in 2014. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, I've been a part of a lot of great teams and been a part of a lot of, you know, obviously great staffs as well. Like it's been an incredible journey so far and I'm, I'm not looking to end it quite yet. So it's, it's been fun. Oh, good. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. No, I'm sure you've got yeah. lots more, to accomplish although Hopefully. I think that you could retire tomorrow and feel like you accomplished everything that you needed to because that's just phenomenal to win so many gold medals for the national team and for the the, the world olympics too it's yeah it's phenomenal um so i have a couple more questions about hockey specifically for someone like me who doesn't know a lot about hockey i know your position is forward What's unique about that position compared to say like being a goalie or another role on the team? Yeah. So I play, so there's three, there's two forward positions. Well, three, technically there's okay. right wing, left wing and center. Um, I play center forward and it's mm -hmm. um, probably one of the higher, more like higher responsibility positions. You have a lot to do um, defensive in the defensive zone and throughout the entire like offensive zone as well. Um, mm -hmm. But it's uh, center requires a lot of mobility. You have to move around a lot. You have to support the puck and all of, I know people probably think I'm speaking a different language the way I'm talking right now, but um, you really have to. No, support. no, it's really interesting. Yeah. Though. Yeah. You have to support all over the ice. Um, and it's a little bit less structured. Um, the center is a little less structured, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you have a lot of responsibility. So that's kind of my position, yeah. So does, and, and just so I understand, does that mean that you have to just be in a lot of places at once? Like maybe you move around more than other people do in terms of covering left or right and that kind of thing? Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. So I'm like a kind of, I'm, um, I'm all over, but it's like controlled, if that makes sense. So I have to support the puck, um, and you know, in all the corners on sidewalls, um, and just being able to play well def in the defensive zone and well in the offensive zones. Got it. That makes sense. That sounds like a huge challenge actually. So it's really impressive. Um, and I actually, um, wait, can okay. I just add something to that? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> So I just sure. saw a question pop up about face-offs and um, yeah, yeah, I, yes, yeah, that's probably, yeah. that's probably, that's probably what I should have like started with. Yeah. Centers have to take the face-offs. So they have to like, you know, every time there's a stoppage of play, like I'm the one taking the draw. So I have to try to win the puck uh, to my team. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Okay. That makes sense. And I'm excited later too, to go into more terminology because we're going to play a little hockey and wine terminology game. Um, but I have another hockey question, which is you've spent so much of your life, like 
so much of your life now just training to be the very, very best in hockey. How do you think this is going to prepare you for whatever's next? I don't know if you know what's next for you after, your, after you retire, whenever that is. But do you feel like, um, I guess I should say, how, how do you think that will prepare you for whatever is in store for you in the future? Yeah, I think, I mean, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, I look at my career in hockey and the biggest aspect of my hockey career has been being a part of a team. And um, I think being a part of a team, obviously, you know, you have to get along with people, you have to respect people, you have to um, work together to win and work together to have um, a successful season. And I think those are some key things that are going to, you know, make my career, um, you know, my career in hockey right now, it's going to help me out the next couple of years or however long I play. But in the future, when I try to get a job at a company or um, whatever I end up doing, which I'm not sure yet, I think those qualities, that team aspect was really going to carry me through and help me um, throughout my, you know, other career. I bet both from like being a leader on the team to also just being a member of the team, I'm sure. Yeah. And I think, you know, it, being, um, being able to like be a part of um, a team for so long. I've obviously been a rookie on the team and now I'm more of a veteran. So the roles have changed. My role has changed a little bit, um, kind of mentioned leadership. And I think those are things that, you know, happen in a company as well, especially when you're working for a company a little longer than five years. I think you just have to adapt and um, change happens and you have to adapt to that as well. Totally, totally. Well, I feel like we, this is so interesting. I can keep on asking you questions, but I do think that we should have a sip of wine and do a little wine tasting since we've got this beautiful wine in front of us. So we sent you some of our home base Zinfandel. Um, this comes from the Dry Creek Valley, which is in Sonoma Valley. And that's really near our tasting room in Healdsburg. I don't know if you've ever been to wine country before, Brianna, have you? No, um, I'm planning on it at some point. I like want to get out there so bad. <laughs> well, good. I mean, I know how, how can you fit it into your schedule? There's probably not as many like ice rinks in Napa or Sonoma, but when you can come visit us, please do. Um, I'd love to tell you about this wine in particular that we're drinking. So we call it home base. A lot of our wines at Baca are named after games or are game related because Honestly, we just don't take ourselves too seriously. But this wine is called Home Base because it's near our home base, which is in Healdsburg. So Dry, Dry Creek is this really special area where it gets very warm during the day, but it also has cool nights. And that's great because the warmth during the day give a lot of richness to the grapes themselves. And then the cool air in the morning and the evening also gives it a nice acidity. So it's a nice balance between being rich and also having a crispness. And um, something that's char characteristic for Dry Creek is that the grapes themselves have a lot of really rich, um, dark berry fruit. So in this wine, I get a lot of kind of blackberry, dark cherry flavors, which I love so much. So see what you think. Okay. Do you get any of that blackberry on the, on the nose or on the, yeah. on the palate? Yeah, I mean, I'm very, awesome. like, I I love all types of wine, but, like, I can taste it a little bit. Oh, good. Yeah, what is your, what does wine look like in your household? Do you drink very much wine? Um, probably yeah, I athlete. wouldn't say I drink, yeah, I don't drink it a lot, but I do, um, I drink different types, obviously, but um, I like to stick to a cab, usually is, like, my favorite um, mm -hmm. but I'm really open to anything depending on what type of food I'm eating, I guess. Yeah. Well, I love cabs too. That's in my family. My parents are Craig and Catherine Hall who started Hall Lines. And there's a saying in Napa Valley that we say cab is king. That's really what we're known for, or best known for. But Zinfandel is a really special grape that has a lot of cab qualities. It's very um, big and rich and a lot of flavor. But I like it because it also pairs with food really well. Sometimes if you drink a big cab, I don't know if you found this, but it can sometimes overpower the food unless you're having like a big steak or something. But Zinfandel yeah. is also good with salads and soups and a lot of different flavors. And something special about it that I like is it has spice in it. So it's really good for like the holidays when you have a lot of foods with great, you know, pumpkin and other kinds of fun spices. So 
we like to spice it up that way. Yeah, that's that's good to know. I'm gonna take that. Um, I'm gonna <laughs> definitely take this one and hopefully get more of it at some point. Good. <laughs> Wonderful. Good. Well, cheers, cheers to that. Cheers. Cheers. Um, okay, so I asked you to prepare three hockey terms. I have three wine terms for you. It's a very, you're a competitive person. I'm not quite as competitive, but I like to fancy myself a little bit competitive. So I thought we could play a game where we could try to trump each other. I'm going to ask you, we'll alternate. And we'll ask each other if, if you know what either a wine term or hockey term is. And we'll see, we'll see if either of us get any of them right. It'll be fun. Okay. okay. So I'm going to start with an also. It's A-H dash S-O. Do you know what an also is? <laughs> no. <laughs> or I should say, how about instead of saying, do you know, just guess. What do you, if you could guess anything in the world, what would that be related to wine? Uh, so uh, I would think of like along the like lines of like a decanter, like some sort of filter or something. That's yeah, that's not too far off actually. That's pretty good. Okay, so an also is have you, I'm sure you've seen. Let's see if I have a normal. Okay, a normal corkscrew looks like this that I normally use, or you can call it a wine. Okay. But an also is a wine opener. Excuse me. But have you ever seen a wine opener like this where it has like. Oh. The two. Okay, so um, another nickname for this is a bartender's best friend because you can, instead of a corkscrew, which kind of goes down into the cork and pulls out the cork, this one actually slides down the bottle and pulls out the cork. And I guess there's some sayings where like bartenders could like take the cork out and take a sip of wine and then put the cork right back in because oh of my this, God. and you wouldn't ever know because <laughs> there's not a corkscrew in there. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. Okay, so I wasn't too far off. All right, your turn okay. to ask me a question about hockey. Okay, so how many players are on the ice at a time? This is like a really easy one, and I really should know the answer to this. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, well, you did tell me earlier there are three people who are forward. I'm going to guess that there are three people in the back and one goalie, so I'm going to guess seven. On one team? I don't know. Yeah, so there, that's a, it was pretty close. There's only two defensemen, so there's six total oh. on each team. Yeah, six. Including okay. the goalie, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, <laughs> I appreciate the not too difficult question, but okay. <laughs> All right. Do you know what a, a magnum is? A magnum. Should I know? Should I know these? <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know. If you were to guess what a magnum okay. was, what would you say? Um, I would guess. I don't know. I would probably guess like some sort of um, very the wines like very high in alcohol content or something. <laughs> yeah. That's not a bad, that's not a bad um, answer, actually, because you could have like a, because Magnum is like big, so it could mean that. It actually means a large bottle of wine, so this okay. is a normal bottle so, of wine. I'm getting help, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting help from my, my best friend Casey right here. She's saying big wine, big bottle. Oh, yeah. she did say that. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Casey. Casey. <laughs> um, yeah, you're right, it's basically like an equivalent of two bottles at the same time. It's one and a half liters of wine, so just a big bottle, basically. Okay. Um, All right. Not too bad. Okay, my oh yeah, got, I have to uh, come up with one here. So um, there's penalties in hockey. So for a minor penalty, which is normal penalties, how long does the person have to serve a penalty for? <laughs> that was that's not too hard. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, mine was oh. really hard for you too. So I think this is good. This is appropriate. Um. A minute? A minute? So it's two it's two minutes. No. Yeah, two minutes. Two minutes. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not bad. Well, you weren't too far off. I'm glad it wasn't so far off. All right. And I've seen the penalty box before. I feel like I should know that. Okay. All right. 
Okay, my last question for you is, oh, why am I holding a bottle of wine? Don't let that <laughs> affect your answer to this. All right, okay, punt, a punt. It sounds like a sports term, but it's actually also a wine term. A punt, and like that's, can, you, can I ask for you to use it in a sentence? <laughs> uh, let's see, hmm. I really like the way that punt looks. No. Uh, how, <laughs> um, how about the, the, how about this? I'll just say this. A punt is part of a bottle. It's part of a wine bottle. Okay. I would think the punt is like the bottom of the bottle. Okay. I'm super impressed with you. That It is the bottom of the bottle. Like I think people yeah. know that. It is. It's this. It's this sort of dome shaped thing on the bottom yeah. of the bottle. Nice work. Super okay, fast. thanks. <laughs> okay, and I think uh, for my final question, I think uh, you can get this one, hopefully. Um, okay, all right. Well, don't so, say that too easily. All right. Okay. In an Olympic hockey game, so, or this is like for my age group, um, I should say like my elite level, how long are the periods in a, the hockey game? So we have three periods. How long are, is each one? <laughs> oh, you're really sharing that I, or this is really showing that I know so little <laughs> that I should know. I think I told you earlier that my sister actually played women's hockey as well. So this is kind of embarrassing. Um, I'm just going to say 15 minutes. Okay, so that's, it's pretty close. It's 20 minutes, but 15 is what I did when I was, when I first started hockey, probably. <laughs> okay <laughs> well that's really kind of you thank you Whew. that was tough I think we both deserve a, a sip of wine after that after that quiz. yes <laughs> but I feel smarter I don't know about you now yeah <laughs> for sure um well my goodness 20 minutes goes by so fast um I think I need to let you go but before you go I did want to ask you a little bit about your foundation that you created about a year or two years ago. I know it's called the Brianna Decker Foundation. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so I created an endowment fund um, about a year and a half endowment. ago. It based, yeah, no, it's all good. Um, both both have a good ring to it. Um, so I created an endowment fund um, a couple years ago. Um, and basically it's to support w uh, youth girls hockey in the state of Wisconsin. Um, I think right now coming back to Wisconsin, um, the last couple of years, I just realized there's just this lack of funding, um, which is like stunting the growth a little bit in the state of Wisconsin. So I created an endowment fund to, um, help support programs. So each year, um, a program programs, um, apply for the grant, And if they get it, then I actually personally go, um, minus this year because of COVID and stuff, but I typically personally go and deliver the check to them in their program. Um, and they use that money towards buying jerseys, um, buying ice times, um, you know, equipment for the girls if they need. So um, it's something that I really enjoyed creating. And I've had a lot of huge support from a lot of different um, donors. And I couldn't be more thankful so far um, how far it's taken off. That's wonderful. How many recipients have you had so far? Um, there's been a lot. Um, but yeah, so I, the first year I gave it back, um, I actually didn't let a, pe teams and organizations apply for it. I actually just gave it back to the youth program that I grew up playing in. And so, um, it was actually, it was awesome to go back to my home rink and, you know, meet the youth girls that are playing hockey and they got to meet me. And it's just fun to be able to, you know, be a direct role model. I think growing up, I had I mostly yeah, I had mostly male role models growing up. And then, in, you know, I had a couple female role models, but I would have died to like meet some of them um, when I was younger. So I'm glad I was able to have met some of those young players in person. Oh, that's fantastic. So if people want to find out more about the endowment fund, where can they go? They can go to usahockey.com. Um, and it's the USA Hockey Foundation actually is what um, the website that people can go to and my endowment fund um, is a tab that you can click on. Oh, fantastic. Well, Brianna, thank you so much for giving us time. I know it's a busy time, both in your own training and also with the holidays with your family. Thanks so much for taking a little bit of time and 
having a glass of wine with me and talking about your life and also wine. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. I really enjoyed it. And I hope you and everyone else who has joined today have a great new year and safe uh, 2021. Thanks. You too. All right. See you Thanks. soon, Brianna. Bye. Well, that was fantastic. I don't know about you, but I don't get to spend a lot of my days talking to Olympic athletes and um, world champions. Brianna is so inspiring what she's doing both for women back in Wisconsin and also in her own life for our country and for our, you know, our national team. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you have a wonderful new year and we've got some wonderful other happy hours coming up soon. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye.